Hello everyone. Let's talk about history and origin of the pharmacy. First, let's learn some history of what we are expanding our knowledge on. And the word the pharmacy is actually derived from the Greek word pharmakon, which means charm or medicine. The word apothecary, it derives from the word apotheca. It's meaning a place where the wine, spices, and the herbs were stored. Dating back to the primitive ages, humans have evolved their use of nature to ease the pain, disease, and suffering. So this art of apothecary was originated from the methods of where we prepared the substances for the treatment of any kind of the injury or any kind of the disease. But in those times, like those olden ages, the remedies and the recipes, they were handed down by word of mouth through a wise man or a woman. So there were no uh, study, like you have to do a pharmacist study, you have to be a pharmacy technician like that, but they just were called as the wise man or the wise woman. The first records of the medical texts were founded on the clay tablets, which recorded symptoms of illnesses, prescriptions, and directions for the compounding medication. So if we talk about who was the best known and most important record on the apothecary, it was the papyrus Evers, which was originated from ancient Egypt. So it starts from the Egyptians around 1500 BC. The Evers was the single roll of the yellow brown papyrus, about 12 inches wide and 22 yards long. And it was wrapped in a mummy clothes and packed in the metal case. It contained more than 800 prescriptions and ancient recipes. So if it says 800 prescriptions, so it means they are telling about different 800 types of the uh, diseases and different kinds of the ages where they can use them. And it mentions over 700 different drugs. So some of the medical medicinal compounds in this ancient manuscripts are still used today. For example, castor oil, it can be used to treat the constipation. Even now, we use the castor oil and it is using since 1500 BC. And will bark was used to reduce the fever and pain. Nowadays, it is called as acetyl salicylic acid. We made that drug into the name of acetyl salicylic acid now. Around then 200, 2000 BC, Shen Nung, he was a Chinese emperor. He sought out and investigated several hundred medicinal herbs then at that time. So he said to have tasted hundreds of herbs to test their medicinal values. So he used on his own first and then tried, then made it, then told his test medicinal values. So he is assumed to be the author of the earliest recording of the Chinese pharmacopoeia, which includes 365 medicines derived from the herbs, barks, roots, brought in from the fields, swamps, and woods. Nowadays, even the Chinese herbs are, like everybody is well known that Chinese herbs are very good to be for any kind of the treatment. And this Chinese pharmacopoeia is still used today. One of the most well-known founder of the medicine was a Greek physician named Hippocrates. He became the founder of the medicine and was regarded as the greatest physician of this time. So do remember, please, the founder of the medicine was a Greek physician, which was named as Hippocrates. He based his medical practice on observations and study of the human body. He held the beliefs that illness had a physical and rational, rational explanations. He rejected the views of his time where illnesses were caused by superstitions or the possessions by evil spirits. Because in those era, might everybody knows that the people, if anybody gets sick, instead of giving them medication, they say like, oh, he is got by an evil spirit. There was some bad superstitions. No, 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 we're not going to give anything to them because it is something evil I has done this thing. So he developed an oath of medical ethics for physicians to follow. So to this day, physicians still take on his oath before beginning their medical practices. That's why I reminded you Hippocrates is the name that if we join the profession, we have to take the oath of the Hippocrates. Then in early 1600s, the very first unofficial pharmacist was the Louis Hubbard. He didn't get any license, was not officially declared anywhere, but it was unofficial pharmacist. Why? He, became to the, he came to the Nova Scotia from the France and planted his own herbal garden and cultivated the plants to provide the medicines for the pioneers. Then the Hubbard is widely considered to be the first Canadian apothecary as well as the first European 
to farm in Canada. He was born in Paris in 1575. He was the son of Nicholas Hubbard and Jacqueline Paget. And Nicholas was an apothecary with a practice in Paris. In the tradition of the day, Louis followed in his father's profession and Louis was trained in medical arts, but he became the specialist in the pharmacology. When we say pharmacology, it is the study of complete medicines. It was from this that he developed what was to become a lifelong interest in plants and gardening. Then by 1600, Louis was established in Paris as well as an apothecary and a spice merchant. Then John D. Higginbotham in 1864 to 1961, he was born in Gulf, Ontario. In 1883, he graduated from the Ontario College of Pharmacy and the following year came to the Fort McLeod and opened a drugstore. That was the first drugstore in Canada. He moved to Lethbridge then in 1885, where he opened the Higginbotham drugstore again. Around mid 1800s, Canada became the nation which had new legislation that initiated the medical acts now, which sought to control the pharmacy. This act began the process of establishing a pharmacy licensing body to help control the pharmacy profession. Because now there were many other people, they were coming out in the origin that they can also use these herbs and became the pharmacists. So at that time, they established a pharmacy licensing body that was in mid 1800s. In late 1800s, an act passed in Alberta restricting the sale of drugs and medicines to only those persons holding a pharmacy diploma from the medical faculty in the Great Britain, Ireland, or Canada. Before this act, anyone could open a store and establish a professional practice regardless of their qualification. But after that, no. Then in by early 1900s, the Alberta Pharmaceutical Association was founded. By the 2000s, the Alberta Pharmaceutical Associations were split into two organizations. One was to representing the public interest and one was to representing the pharmacist. So the Alberta College of Pharmacists, which is called as ACP, is the body that is responsible for the licensing of pharmacists and technicians, while the Alberta Pharmacist Association is a voluntary association that advocates on behalf of the pharmacists. So all in all, we have come a long way to where we are. We started way back in the primitive age and now here we are. So there is tons of more history regarding the development of other association connected with pharmacy, but I will save you from the border. That's it, thank you.